Some of his contemporaries considered him a wizard. He invented coatings that gave oil a wondrous luminosity. His paintings had new depth and three-dimensionality and gave us the photorealism of the Dutch masters 200 years so soon. He was considered as a master of perspective and natural light. That's even stranger when you realize that the rules of perspective were just being written in Italy in 1434. On this episode of History of Renaissance, we will talk about Jan van Eyck, one of the most important figures of Northern Renaissance who innovated and perfected the oil painting. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button so that you can watch more episodes on History of Art and learn more about all your favorite artists. Let's begin! Jan van Eyck is said to have been born sometime before 1390 in the town of Masaik, also known as Eyck. That would be near to modern-day Tilburg. The area grew into a religious center during the early medieval years. However, the history of the city is much older than that, as it can be traced back to the era of the Roman Empire. Jan had two brothers and a sister, all painters. Hubert, the oldest brother, is said to be responsible for Jan's artistic education and later made him his young disciple in his home in Ghent. Hubert died in 1426, before the completion of the Ghent altarpiece, one of his popular works. The younger brother Lambert is mentioned in some court documents as well as it is believed that he took over Jan's workshop after his death. While risking to be wrong, as there are debates around Van Eyck's early works, I will say that the Turin Milan Book of Hours is the artist's oldest surviving work, as it fits all the characteristics of his later pieces. This illuminated manuscript has an astonishing history on its own, and while we can make a separate episode about it, we can discuss some of the facts here. The book was commissioned around 1380 from Jean Duc du Berry, a man described as a passionate bibliophile. In the early 1420s, the book came to the possession of John of Bavaria, also known as John III the Pitiless, Count of Holland and Hainau. During the same time, Jan van Eyck came to his service. This led scholars to believe that part of the illuminations in the book, made by an unknown artist, were in fact made by Jan van Eyck. Years later, the book came to the possession of Philip the Good, Duke of Burgundy, and unfortunately, in 1904, a fire destroyed a big part of it. This and the lack of documentation make Van Eyck's involvement in its creation uncertain. Other notable works from his early period include the Ghent altarpiece, which I mentioned, Portrait of a Man with a Blue Chaperon, and St. Francis Receiving the Stigmat. After spending some time in France, Van Eyck was sent by Philip the Good to Portugal in 1427 and 1428 to help secure a wife for the Duke. It was in this occasion that he painted Philip's future wife Isabella, daughter of John I of Portugal. Jan Van Eyck returned to Bruges around 1430 and settled there. He bought a house, married a girl called Margaret and made a fortune from the rich merchants who had transformed the city into a bursting trade center. During this period, he produced a lot of portraits, including Man with Turban, which is also believed to be a self-portrait, The Virgin of Chancellor Rollin, and Madonna with Canon van der Bell. The first of this trio is the only work of Van Eyck that survives in its original frame. Inscribed at the top of the frame is his motto in Greek letters, while another at the bottom of the frame this time in Latin states, Jan van Eyck made me, 1433, 21st of October. The Chancellor Rollin painting shows van Eyck's mastery of light and colors, as well as his passion for detail, best seen in the windows columns and the river beyond, which leads away to even more distant and hazy hills on the horizon. The churches in the town on the Madonna side suggest that this landscape was not meant to be a real one. The reason why we will discuss this enigmatic painting, as we did with Bosch's Garden of Earthly Delights in our previous episode, is because it is the best example of the artist's extraordinary capacity to depict detail and light. It has also puzzled historians as to the way the couple is shown, the hidden messages and its complexity. 
The Arnolfini wedding, as it is also known, is painted in Bruges in 1434. It shows a cloth merchant, Giovanni Arnolfini, with his wife, Giovanna Cenami, although her identification is debatable. Although the majority of historians suggest that the woman in the painting is pregnant, this interpretation has been challenged in recent years, as the hand gesture of lifting the dress recurs in contemporary renditions of virgin saints and was considered very fashionable during those times. This gesture can be seen in Van Eyck's other paintings of the Frick Madonna and the Dresden Triptych. The theory that this is a painted marriage certificate by the artist has been abandoned too. Another theory suggests that the painting was made after Giovanna's death. The objects placed around the room point to the couple's relationship and symbolize marriage. The dusting brush hanging from the bedstead refers to a woman's domestic duties, and the carved figure above it, that is probably Saint Margaret, is the patron saint of childbirth. The subtle interaction of light and shadow creates an atmosphere of calm affection. The controlled source of light, such as that coming through the window to the viewer's left and shadows, helped to unify the composition, a characteristic of the signature realism of early Flemish painting, which Van Eyck perfected. The way in which the artist treats objects in this painting, mostly notably in the golden chandelier and the rounded mirror, fairly give Jan Van Eyck the title, Father of Oil Painting. Despite his individual fame and success, Van Eyck didn't work in isolation, but shared his achievements. As was used with other artists at the time, he employed assistants and other painters who replicated his paintings and other works. This helped the artist to cope with the growing demand and supply the open market around Europe with his paintings. After his death in June 1441, his brother Lampert not only took over his workshop, but settled his estate and other affairs that Jan left behind. In his work, he achieved such a sophisticated level of realism that some believed he was a magician. A century after his death, his amazing skills were acknowledged and honored as a 16th century Florentine painter and art historian Giorgio Vasari credited the Netherlandish painter with the very invention of oil painting, a myth that continued well into the 19th century. Thank you for watching this episode. If you want to watch more episodes on history of Renaissance, and learn about more great artists, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification button. Until next time.